Understanding Fio's unique camera means understanding how everything inside plays a role in the user's journey. I spoke with co-founder and CTO Jesper and their VP of Engineering Thomas for a deeper understanding of the tech that goes into these cameras. When you look at a camera, you, th you, you think this is just a camera with a lens. But yeah. actually this camera, it has two lenses and it has two encoders. Because when we take in the, the 4K images, it's a big size, right? So we need to compress them. So we have the left and the right. So that recording, that needs to be processed. We need to put them together generate what we call the panoramic view. It's also something that nobody yeah. else had built yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, exactly. It's not yeah. that you can buy a book off the shelf and say this is how you shall build a camera. Like. All the cameras we've made has been um, calibrated, so we have like a profile of how distortion happens. The panoramic format is, is a standardization that enables us to actually succeed with the models. We could numerically approximate where it should be in the model according to where the users actually see the corners. This is a key point for enabling the AI to work, because AI, with all its glory and benefits, has quite hard limitations. This is pretty impressive. I think the camera that you're building is amazing, but that's not your real product, is it? The use case for the customer is they go out and they, they, they do the recording and then they turn the camera off and then they bring it home. If you just turn on the camera and you have a connection to the internet, uh, our software will automatically detect that and it will start uploading when the, the upload is, is complete. Up in the in cloud, we can do kind of the processing and then we could generate all these kind of condensed things. So you can have a goal highlight, you can have pendency highlight, you can share them on Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. We have a good idea about distribution of players. We can use that information to kind of draw heat maps for how, how does, you know, the team dominate. So that is super helpful because then the coach can give much more feedback to the players than if we should do it, you know, manually. The majority of the, our customers are not coaches that are doing the best team. They are not paid, they're doing it because they love the, the sport. They, they don't have much time. So, so what we are trying to do is kind of helping them the model that you built to actually understand the pitch, where did you get the data from? Initially, we hoped for the best case. So we actually hoped that we could solve the problem through classic computer vision. All the tricks of the trade there, look for movements, compare pictures, look for differences, and you could get a fair bit of the way there but you cannot cut it. We spent a fair bit of time believing that we could build a suitcase, that we could give people a laptop and a camera, go do your recording, you have a nice system, we could just work like that. Yeah. But we couldn't make it work. And that pushed us into uh, the whole machine learning area. Mm. And machine learning means you need a ton of data uh, and nobody can say how much. So uh, that's back to the go going on a, on a venture where you don't know how long it will be. You want to develop it in the cloud before you move it over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, Getting the data, getting access to a large amount of it. We're based on supervised learning, which means that we need to train the network for what we would like to get out of it. So you have one model to create a follow cam. Mm -hmm. yeah. Initially, we started with the ideology that, that we need to find where the players wear the ball. Over time, we figured out it was not exactly the right way for the control in the camera. We need to train the network for what we would like to get out of it. I think I've personally annotated like a million clicks on, on, on how a soccer ball looks like and actually manually going through to create the, 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 the critical mass that enables us to, 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 to run the machine learning. Doing manual control, getting motion curves over time of how the camera is moving and zooming. From that point, the AI took off and actually crossed the point of we are better than, than humans. Well, the technological story behind